We've all seen the images of death and injury and devastation that have come out of the explosions in Beirut over the last week. The pain unleashed has been horrific, but one image has stayed with me, that of a woman cradling three newborn babies. This woman, a nurse in a Beirut hospital, had instinctively snatched those babies from their humidity cribs and holding them to herself, she ran to find safety. A journalist who was on the streets noticed her in the midst of the chaos and snapped the image. In an interview later, this woman said, in those moments, I became their mother. As a mother protects her children, this Lebanese woman fiercely protected those little ones. In Matthew's Gospel, we read the story of another mother, a Lebanese woman, whose love for her child caused her to venture out onto the streets into a difficult, uncomfortable, even dangerous situation. This mother came to Jesus seeking safety and healing and hope for her little one. This is not an uncommon story in the Gospels. People often came to Jesus seeking healing. But on this occasion, the path to healing had a few twists and turns in it. Jesus' responses seem out of character, surprising and even disturbing. So let's take a look at this passage, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, and see why Matthew offers this story as part of his good news for us. Jesus was in non-Jewish territory. The text says he was in the region of Tyre and Sidon in Lebanon. And a woman came to him pleading, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. This non-Jewish woman addresses Jesus with a very Jewish title, son of David. It may be a reference to his Jewishness, or perhaps she had heard someone else use the title, or perhaps she had one of those divinely inspired moments when she saw who he was, the prophesied one or descendant of King David. We don't really know, but this title, her language, her pleading suggested that she recognised Jesus as more than just a man. He was a healer, perhaps even a divine healer. Jesus responded to her pleas with silence. It seems almost as if Jesus ignored her. I wonder if you've ever felt like that, like you have poured out your heart to God, asked him for what you need, prayed for help, and it has seemed as if he was silent. If you have, you're not alone. What sometimes feels like the silence of God can be an opportunity, an invitation for us to dig deeper. Christian author Chuck Swindle wrote, God's silence doesn't mean his absence. Silence is God's call to you to grow deeper. Jesus' silence certainly evoked a reaction in the disciples. They were quick to fill the silence with words. They urged Jesus to send the woman away. She is bothering us with all her begging. Bothering them? I thought she was talking to Jesus. Did her presence make the disciples feel uncomfortable? A non-Jew? A woman? A beggar? Or was it that she was interrupting them, intruding on their time, an inconvenience to them? How often have we said or thought, they're bothering me, and in effect we have sent someone away from Jesus by closing our hearts to them. Or perhaps we have felt like we are the one doing the bothering. John Gowans captures this tragedy when he pens, there are people hurting in the world out there. If we close our eyes, perhaps they'll go away without you, without me, without Christ. 
When Jesus finally speaks, it seems like he is sending her away too. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus affirms in his words that he is the Messiah sent to redeem Israel. But the woman presses on, Lord, help me. And he responds, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. The prevailing view held by the Jews of Jesus' day was that they were superior, separate, special, and Gentiles, like this woman, non-Jews, were unworthy, clean, less than. In giving voice to these words, I wonder if Jesus is exposing and magnifying the hidden thoughts and attitudes and prejudices held by the Jews and demonstrated here by the disciples? Was he exposing to challenge their attitudes, opening the way for change, broadening their understanding of his mission? Yes, to redeem Israel, but also to reveal God's love to all people through Israel. As she kneels in humility and desperation and faith deepened through tragedy, Jesus reaches across the divides and speaks directly to her. Dear woman, your faith is great. Your request is granted. I think it's rather ironic that this non-Jew, Gentile woman has shown greater faith in Jesus than even his own disciples. For remember in the last passage of scripture we looked at, Jesus said to Peter, his disciple, O oh, you of little faith. This Lebanese mother, whose love for her child caused her to venture out into the streets, into a difficult, uncomfortable, even dangerous situation, found safety and healing and hope for her child and through her child for herself. Here is the good news for us in this story. When we cry out to God and are met with silence, this silence does not mean that God is absent or he does not hear us. Silence is God's call for us to grow deeper. When we kneel before God and the answers don't seem to give, don't seem to come our way, those answers invite us to trust even more. When we persist in faith despite setbacks and obstacles and barriers, we grow deeper, we go deeper and discover that God is right there, offering safety, healing and hope. May that be your experience today.